For the treatment tier, we're going to branch out into differential diagnosis a little bit at the end. For now, let's preface this tier with a simple generality. Most of these bugs are going to be self-limiting and don't actually require treatment, or only require supportive therapy. For many of the rest, or for severe disease, we'll see a lot of ciprofloxacin and TMP-SMX use due to their high gram-negative activity. The last miscellaneous section will also use TMP-SMX, which is the first line for many UTIs, but also has some low-yield microbe-specific treatments that we'll cover. Salmonella will be the first to follow the pattern described with Cipro and TMP-SMX as good medications to go to. Many species are also susceptible to azithromycin and some cephalosporins. But what a physician would likely first concentrate on is rehydrating the patient and replenishing electrolytes. EHEC is sensitive to many antibiotics, but they have not shown to decrease the length or severity of disease, likely because they don't bond to the toxin produced by EHEC. For mild disease, it will be self-limiting and not require treatment. If HUS occurs, blood transfusions or dialysis might be required. Fluoroquinolones like Cipro are still good against ETEC, though usually not required. TMP-SMX used to be a frequent treatment, but in recent years, more resistance is being seen. This is no longer the first-line treatment for ETEC. Shigella and Salmonella follow many of the same pathways, which is why they require a special medium to differentiate between them. Though usually self-limiting, severe disease can be treated with fluoroquinolones and beta-lactams with great success. Macrolides like azithro can also be used. With the two species of Yersinia discussed, treatment should usually be focused on y enterocolitica Tetracyclines and aminoglycosides, such as streptomycin and gentamicin, have shown to be effective if required for severe disease. So has TMP, SMX, and some beta-lactams, though they weren't added to the slide. It would be unlikely to be tested on y pestis treatment, but fluoroquinolones like livofloxacin would be the first line. Klebsiella has too many subspecies and varied susceptibility, so there's debate on whether any antibiotic should be considered the first-line treatment without testing. For the miscellaneous groupings, we have a wide range of antibiotics. Here's a list of some of the more common ones. However, due to the rarity of these on testing, I wouldn't spend too much time memorizing them. Key points would be Proteus, that can still be treated with beta-lactams, but is resistant to nitroferrantoin has been building resistance to Cipro and even TMP-SMX too. Next, Bacteroides is another concern due to the severe disease it can cause with penetration injuries. It is still susceptible to many antibiotics except penicillins. The first line is usually still recommended to be Metro due to its anaerobic coverage. Now, we have covered over half of the microbes for this course and their treatments. The last few modules are relatively smaller and more easily distinguished from the microbes in other modules. Let's see how much you can remember from the previous modules. These questions can be regarding the microbes, their diagnostic testing, and their treatments. There's no cheat sheet for this currently, so double check your answers with the notes you've taken from previous modules. Studies suggest the information will stick better if it's not simply handed to you. First one, how many bacteria causes of pneumonia have we covered so far? Name the ones you can and write them out. Feel free to pause the video between questions. Do you remember the different treatment types for each of these? How many skin and soft tissue pathologies have we covered? Do you remember which ones were gram positive or gram negative? How would we differentiate some of those that are in the same gram staining category? Let's say you have diagnosed a patient with strep pneumo, but they're allergic to beta-lactam antibiotics. What would be the proper treatment for them? These open-ended questions are great clinical thinking exercises. They test your memory much better than multiple choice questions, which can be faked by recognition memory. If you have any other open-ended questions you think would be beneficial, feel free to share them with us as well. We're working on setting up a forum for collecting learner ideas, or post them to the in-class discussion in the meantime.